Hi, I want to talk to you about another stress when we have a system in equilibrium. It's when we change temperature. And here's an important thing you need to know about uh, temperature. When you change the temperature of a system that's at equilibrium, it actually uh, changes the value of K. You'll recall that our equilibrium constant K, it is product over reactance. Now, if we change concentration, pressure, related to that is volume, if we make either of those changes, the value of K, the actual number, always stays the same. And so the system, Bichette-Lay's principle, will always adjust, it will shift forward or reverse to maintain the ratio of reactants to products to keep that value. Now, temperature, and you need to have this memorized, temperature actually changes the value of K. Now, the math behind that is uh, pretty complicated, way beyond the scope of a first year chemistry class. You don't need to know how to calculate the new K value when temperature changes. You do need to know that when you change temperature, it changes the value of K. Um, you'll notice in all of your problems with equilibrium, it will say, the temperature is 800 Kelvin or held constant temperature. Um, in order to do uh, equilibrium problems, you have to have constant temperature, otherwise uh, the value of K will change. Now, that having been said, we can definitely predict which way a reactant is going to shift, or excuse me, a reaction is going to shift when we change the temperature. Um, I have a trick for you, and I think this makes it easier to think it through. Um, here it is. What I want you to do is look at the delta H, and I've written your two takeaways up here. If you have an exothermic reaction, and you remember what exothermic stands for? Um, the energy releases, exits, EX, EX, exit. Um, so here, remember, energy is release. And so I'm gonna write the word exit. Okay, with that in your mind, when we have a negative delta H, what I want you to do is to write plus heat on the product side. When a system is exothermic, it really is as if heat energy is one of the products. It releases energy at the end. Now, remember, it's a net energy. Yeah, it takes energy always to break bonds. But then when new bonds are formed, it releases energy. Um, the energy it takes to break the bonds is less than the energy required um, or energy released when uh, the bonds are formed. That difference gives us a net release. You'll remember our activation energy diagram. There you go, exothermic. Here's the negative delta H, leftover energy. Here's the energy you put in, total energy you get out, that net energy is your, your negative delta H. Okay, so thinking exothermic exit, write the word heat on the product side. I said all of that just to help you make sense of the fact that we write heat on the product side. It, you can think of it like, oh, there's extra heat. Net heat is like a product. Now, endothermic, you'll recall, means to absorb. This absorbs energy, endo, E-N, enter. Okay, that's gonna be significant enter. So when you look at a chemical reaction and it's endothermic, I want you to write the word heat on the reactant side. This requires more energy to break bonds than the amount of energy that's released. This is your activation energy diagram. Looks like that. Put in a ton of energy to break those reactants. Small amount of energy is released. This difference right here is your positive delta H. The total energy you and I have to put in to make that, or net energy you have to put in to make that reaction happen. So when you have an endothermic reaction, think endo, enter, oh yep, I have to put energy in, a net energy in, so write heat on the reactant side. Okay, so once you've written the word heat, I want you to treat it like a concentration, and we're going to use that teeter-totter example that we used with concentration. So I'm going to do a couple of examples with you. First, um, let's look at our exothermic reaction. Okay, let's say that we increase the temperature. We're going to increase the temperature. So we begin at this beautiful equilibrium. We're thinking of the teeter-totter, balanced on both sides. Equilibrium is when we have equal rates. The forward rate equals the reverse rate. I'm at beautiful equilibrium. And then I tweak it. I stress this. I'm going to increase the temperature. Well, you and I know that this entire reaction will experience an increase in temperature, but I want you to pretend all of that extra energy goes right there into the word heat. 
I like a concentration. Um, so if I'm at perfect equilibrium, I increase temperature, pretend all the energy goes into that word heat, it's like um, extra mass, a child jumping on that teeter-totter. That gets heavy, pushes the teeter-totter down. I've got too much energy on the product side. So which way does it have to shift to go back into equilibrium? That's the point of Le Chatelier's principle. Well, we're going to have to put more weight over here. So we're going to have to consume some of this heat, consume some of the products, come back here, produce more of the reactants. It's going to shift in the reverse direction. So it's going to shift toward the reactants in the reverse. So that's how you think it out. We're going to do three more examples. Okay, let's say for an exothermic reaction, we're going to decrease heat. So this is taking the whole reaction and maybe putting in an ice bath, okay? We're going to cool it down, pull some of that heat out. I begin at beautiful, perfect equilibrium. I now remove some of the heat, put it in an ice bath, and I take some of that heat out. Well, it's like the child jumping off of the teeter-totter. This side gets lighter, goes like that. Okay, we're out of balance. It's got to go back into equilibrium, so which way will it shift? We're going to have to shift in the forward direction. I'm going to have to consume reactants and produce more products. We'd have more collisions here start happening to consume those reactants and it'll produce products. So here, I'm like this, it's got to shift forward. I'm going to put my arrow, it will shift to the products, shift forward. Okay, now these two statements for an exothermic reaction are always true. If you have an exothermic reaction and you increase the temperature, it always shifts reverse. Exothermic reaction decreases temperature, always shifts forward. Do not memorize that though. What a mess. Make it make sense. Here are the two things you do. You write the word heat where it goes. Exothermic goes on the product side. It produces that energy, okay? Releases, a net release of energy. So it goes on the product side. And then use that teeter-totter model, number two. If you Increase the temperature, gets heavy, too much heat. If you decrease the temperature, not enough heat. Um, it goes up, the teeter-totter goes up like this. So two things, write the word heat. Number two, think about the teeter-totter. You can figure it out. Make it make sense. You can do it. Okay, let's practice a couple with endothermic. Let's say that we're going to increase the temperature of this endothermic reaction. Again, endothermic, positive delta H, it requires more energy than it releases. So energy enters, it's like it's a reactant. It requires um, that energy. Okay, I increase the temperature. So if I increase the temperature, we're going to put all of this energy into that word, okay? Into that word heat. You and I know it goes to both sides, but remember this is a trick. We're going to pretend that all that temperature goes here. So that heat, I get too much energy, too much heat right here. Um, it's heavy on this side. So which way does it have to shift? It shifts in the forward direction. So this will shift forward toward the products. It's going to consume reactants and make more products. Um, okay, opposite. Let's say that we decrease the temperature. So I'm at perfect equilibrium with this reaction, this nitrogen reaction here, and we set it in an ice bath. I pull out some of that energy so I don't have as much heat. It's going to get light on this side. I need more heat because I pulled some of that energy out by putting it in an ice bath. Which way is it going to shift? It's going to shift in the reverse direction. I got to pull it back into equilibrium. So this will shift reverse toward the reactants. So again, we're going to have more collisions on this product side when it shifts reverse. So it consumes products and it makes more reactants as it pulls it back into equilibrium. It shifts into equilibrium and that is Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, I hope that was helpful for you. There are two other stresses, pressure and temperature, or excuse me, pressure and concentration. Pressure embedded in that is also volume. Check out my playlist on equilibrium if you need help with those. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.